Okay, so uh, here we are. We just changed the password. It's asking for the new password that we just changed it to. Uh, helps to put it in the password screen. There we go. All right, so the the wireless network secure, and after this point, we just get to play. So uh, let's start playing here. All right, so like I said, there's all these tabs up here, and each tab is going to have a sub tab. So let's go to setup. Now setup. We could have saved the DSL problem by turning off DHCP. Uh, right here. Basically, our modem on DSL winds up becoming the, D the DHCP server, but it's much simpler just to tell people to change this number. Really. All right. Uh, there's a domain name, so if we need a .com that we have to resolve to or something like that, that's fine. Uh, these are the type of connections that various internet connections use. Uh, DSL will tend to use PPPoE, but uh, you can program your DSL modem to do that most times. If not, or you need PPTP or L2TP or whatever, then you can program your wireless router. Sometimes you may need to program a static IP if this wireless router is acting as your default gateway for your whole company. I've seen people do this before. It's a little $40 router. It's really not a bad piece of equipment for $40 or $50 if you get a good used or refurbished one. Um, but we're just going to do uh, DHCP. That is its connection to the uh, internet. So what it gets from the ISP or its WAN connection winds up being DHCP. So um, we already configured the IP addresses that configures our local area network. We have a DHCP enabled. We can turn it off here though. We can limit how many computers can get on our local network. So if we only want to allow four computers on our network, we can do that. Or actually, this is the start of addresses. If we want the IP addresses to start at 200, we can do that. Uh, if we want two computers on our network, then we just put a two there. And uh, we can actually modify how long people are allowed to have an IP address and how often they have to renew their IP address. We can set the time on the router to a certain time zone. Another cool feature of this router is the DHCP reservation. Uh, I run a few servers in the house and they have static IP addresses. But because they have static IP addresses, they don't have to talk to the router to get an IP address. And the router doesn't add them to the routing table unless I actually go to that machine and surf the internet. So sometimes my router forgets where those machines are. But I always want those machines to have the same IP address. So what I can do with this router is I can see who's connected to it, select them, add the client, and at this point my computer, which happens to be Vista, will always be 192.168.45.100 it reads it by MAC address. If uh, if you don't want to use this little thing to do it, let me remove that, and you know what your uh, machine's MAC address is, and you would know that by right-clicking on command prompt, run as administrator, run as administrator, and uh, do an IP config slash all, and it'll be listed right up here with physical address. physical address right there that's uh the it's like a social security card for networks for uh, network interfaces and you uh, you may actually have more than one if you have an ethernet card and um, if you have a wireless card you'll actually have two one for each card I have a laptop that has a uh, one for the firewire port I hadn't really figured that out yet if um, so if you want to put them all down that's fine no one's really going to kill you if you do. It's not going to kill you if you do or don't. Uh, and uh, But I would really try to figure out, like this one here shows tunnel adapter, and uh, that's not any good. I want to get the real network card, because this guy actually has a name. It's made by Intel and stuff. But uh, get the MAC address, because one of these settings will actually do good for the MAC address later on anyway. Alright, so um, 
if you're on Linux, you can do an if config, and it'll tell you what the MAC address is. And if you need to specify a specific card, then you can do F0 or F1 or F2 or oh, whichever card you're trying to do. So uh, let me get back out of the command prompt here. So that will cause those machines to always get the same IP address. All right, so uh, DDDNS, DDNS. Well, uh, these are free services offered by uh, dyndns.org or tzo.org, and I actually use them all the time. If I wanted to have technological dot doesn't exist dot com to direct to my home machine, so that way, whenever I pulled in that dot com, it would always go to my home connection. That's what the service that they provide. You can use your own .com or a subdomain that they provide. So, uh, MAC address clone will allow my wireless router when it connects to the WAN to uh, to use a different MAC address. Sometimes people do dangerous things and they block people by MAC address. So, this will allow me to change the MAC address and then I can go back to doing dangerous things again. I wouldn't encourage that though. You can enable it right there. Uh, and then some advanced routing settings, and I don't really see a lot of good for that. Um, you can do a routing name and do a uh, LAN IP and then a subnet mask and a gateway. But uh, honestly, I don't, I don't see a lot of good for that. Uh, but anyway, maybe you will. So, all right, I'm going to pause the video here, and uh, we'll move on to the... Um, Make sure I didn't miss anything. Yeah, we'll move on to the uh, wireless tab.